Hey everyone, in the news this week, Shamima Begum learned she's definitely not returning to Britain after her court appeal turned all ironic and blew up in her face. Captain Thomas finally laid to rest, although in a bizarrely cruel turn of events, the casket was carried in a German-built Mercedes-Benz, followed by a BMW. Couldn't make it up, really. And Harry and Meghan did two major TV appearances, being interviewed by Oprah and James Corden, leading many to demand that they change their attention-seeking ways and start respecting Harry and Meghan's demands for privacy. There was also a fairly big showbiz story in Los Angeles, where Tiger Woods was involved in a car accident. We've all seen him make a 300-yard drive, except this time it was down the side of an embankment. Talk about landing in the rough. It at least answers the question of why did Tiger Woods buy a car? Answer, to make a hole in one. Supposedly the sheriff who oversaw the accident investigation confirmed that he wasn't drunk after making him do a field sobriety test where Tiger was asked to count from 1 to 1,000 in the 50s. Well, it was probably a lot easier seeing as he was counting out $50 bills at the time, allegedly. But of course the other big story of the week was from Scotland where Alex Salmond was giving evidence at a hearing at Hollywood as to whether Nicola Sturgeon deliberately misled Parliament. I say hearing, but there's a salmon and a sturgeon, so perhaps this one's pronounced herring. What are the two competing sides of the story, though? Well, number one, Mr. Salmon claims that there's an ongoing campaign led by the government to damage his reputation and potentially throw him in jail despite his innocence. He says that the prosecution service threw vast public expense and resources at a fabricated court case where there was no real evidence against him. The SNP-led government supposedly forced him to do it against legal advice but backed up by perjury and lies and an easily coerced civil service allowing it all to happen. There was supposedly institutional bias and corruption at the very top level and the SNP stands for subterfuge and perjury. Or number two, Nicola Sturgeon, on the other hand, claims it's all a bizarre conspiracy theory with no evidence to back any of it up. And after they fell apart, Alex decided to drag her reputation into the mud and force her to resign. The thing is, though, that Alex Hammond has no evidence to present largely because he's under a court order not to share any of the evidence that he claims he has, supposedly damning texts and communications proving that Nicola Sturgeon allegedly used the law and coerced the prosecution service to throw him under the bus. I say bus, but it's Edinburgh, so maybe throw him under the tram. You know, we're now living in a world where Alex Salmond, of all people, claims that Scottish institutions cannot be trusted to run an independent country, and that's a man who spent his decades-long career fighting for that very thing. It's akin to if Carolyn Lucas had done a lap around the Top Gear track, or if Jamie Oliver was doing an advert for McDonald's. Although given what happened to his business empire, stranger things have happened after all. The only dough he has these days is that Sergio starter sitting above the cupboard above the spice rack. With regards to the salmon case, so the one question I've not gotten to the bottom of is why? The SNP were fearful they were going to lose seats because of that court case and they wrongly placed the expectation that he would go to jail. It's why they sided with allowing Boris to have that election at the end of 2019, damage limitation at the ballot box. That's the election that decimated Labour, gave Boris a thumping majority and ultimately led to Brexit being able to happen. And if some of what Salmond has said is true, then Nicola Sturgeon would have gambled her reputation, allowed Brexit to happen, got her husband to allegedly commit perjury and possibly risk the public turning on the idea of independence itself. And all for what? Because her and Alex disagreed about some stuff? There's clearly something else being hidden from public view here, and unfortunately we don't have any clue what that is, unless there are perhaps secret clues as to what's going on down south of Edinburgh at Roslyn Abbey, and that Dan Brown can therefore write a novel about it all. You know, it could get turned into a film, and there could be an action scene where Tom Hanks ends up in a car chase at Donald Trump's golf resort, and he maybe has a cameo like in Home Alone 2, and maybe Tiger Woods is there too, and he could look at the speeding car, then at the camera, and shake his head in disapproval. Anyway, at least it would be better than that Da Vinci Code rubbish. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.